Hey folks, welcome to the EDM studio. Today I'm going to be talking about signals and I know that this is a little bit of a background topic and it's a little bit more abstract than some of the other things that I'm hoping to talk about on this channel. But I think it's also a really important one to understand because when we dive into things like filters or additive synthesis, without this it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense. So um, I'm going to try and give just a quick overview, like maybe 10 minutes of it's a really complex topic, but I think we can get the nuts and bolts of what's important when we're talking about signals in the context of music. So with that, uh, let's dive right into it. So when you see a signal in your audio editing program, typically it'll look something like this, where we have this signal plotted against time. And there's really three things that are important to look at um, you know, when you're considering that signal. And those are, Amplitude, pitch, and timbre. So what do we mean by each of those three? Let's start with amplitude. I think a good analogy for amplitude is when you're on the beach and those waves are coming in and crashing on the shore, amplitude is the size of the wave. It's sort of the amount of force that this wave is going to exert. And when you're talking about a sound wave, um, it's basically the exact same thing except when you're talking about a sound wave in air, it's how much pressure is that sound wave going to ultimately exert on your eardrum. So what that means for you hearing the sound is the amplitude is basically how loud the sound is going to be. Um, next, let's talk about pitch. So when we talk about pitch in the context of music, what we really mean is what note are you going to hear? But that has a corollary in signals, which is how quickly is this sound wave oscillating? So consider this graph here. Um, let's think about what is the simplest sound you could possibly create, and that's a sine wave. So it sounds a little bit like this. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of a boring sound. Um, but what that, what that actually is doing is you can even think about your speaker moving back and forth or um, this signal oscillating and the rate at which it oscillates is measured in hertz. So we say one hertz is one oscillation per second. And in this case, the signal is oscillating at 220 hertz, which is middle A on your keyboard. Um, the range of human hearing is from about 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. So 20 times per second up to 20,000 times per second. And in between, we have all these mappings that correspond to notes. Um, <clears throat> so next, let's consider a signal that's oscillating exactly twice as fast. So um, let's say rather than 220 hertz, signal is going to oscillate at 440 hertz. Well, that, that interval corresponds to an octave, and that's always true. So uh, the next A above would be, uh, let's see, 440 hertz, then 880 hertz, which is the A above the A above middle A, and so on. And you can think about that on our graph here as being a signal that's oscillating, um, you know, two times for every one time that the, uh, the root signal oscillates. Um, and then finally, uh, let's talk about timbre. So um, in the simplest sense, timbre is the shape of the signal. So it might not be this perfectly sinusoidal wave. It might be a triangle wave or a square wave or really any arbitrary wave. And that's the difference between the sound that you hear when you play middle A on a guitar and uh, when you play middle A on a piano, right? They're, they're both playing the same note, but they sound different. And in order to dive into that question a little bit deeper, uh, let's do an experiment with Logic. All right, so here we are in Logic, and I've set up the ES2 to output a simple sine wave. 
so it's just one oscillator. I've disabled the other two, and it's outputting um, a simple sine wave. Now, here's where the first leap comes in. So previously, we were talking about signals uh, as plotted against time. But what this EQ is going to do is it's going to give us a visual output of the signal against frequency. So it's saying, in this periodic signal, what frequencies are present. So when I play that middle A, we just get this spike at 220 hertz. And what that's saying is there's only one frequency present in the signal, and it's a oscillation at 220 hertz. And similarly, if I play the A above that, we get this spike at uh, 440 hertz. And if I play any of the notes in between, we get frequencies uh, in between those. Um, now, let's talk about this interval. So what's interesting about this interval is it's a multiple of our root of 220 hertz. So let's say that 220 hertz is what we're going to call the first harmonic, the fundamental. And 440 hertz is what we're going to call the, first, uh, the second harmonic. So it's two times the fundamental, 440 hertz. And we could keep doing that. Uh, you know, the um, third harmonic would then be 660 hertz, uh, and fourth harmonic would be 880 hertz, and so on. Um, now, let's look at what happens when, rather than outputting a simple sine wave, we output a sawtooth wave. So I'm going to play middle A as a sawtooth wave. And it looks like we still had that spike at 220 hertz, but we also had spikes at all of these harmonics. So we had a spike at 440 hertz and a spike at 660 hertz and so on. And the reason these aren't spaced out equally is because actually this graph is not spaced out equally. This is a um, logarithmic graph. So the x-axis is not uh, spaced equally. But if you just look at these markers, you can tell that uh, indeed we are seeing spikes at each of the harmonics of um, 220. So what's going on there? Um, well, I found this really cool visualization of it, actually. And uh, you can kind of ignore the x-axis in this plot, but like, let's say that we have this sine wave and it's oscillating at 220 hertz, and we were to um, add uh, the first harmonic and the second harmonic together with that exponential decay that we saw. So here we have the, the fundamental, the first harmonic, and the second harmonic, and we're adding them together to produce this waveform, and it's got um, somewhat of a sinusoidal shape, but it's not perfect. It, it has this kind of interesting kink in it. Um, and then let's go ahead and add in the third harmonic, and the fourth harmonic, and the fifth harmonic, and so on. And you'll notice that as we add in more and more harmonics, this waveform approaches a sawtooth wave. And in the limit, it will actually be exactly a sawtooth wave. So what we're seeing is that we can recreate the sawtooth wave by adding these harmonics together. Great. Um, so let's go back to the original waveform. Simple sinusoid. OK, cool. Um, next, let's have a look at uh, a square wave. So when I play a square wave at middle A, it actually looks really similar. We have these same spikes, except you'll notice that now um, we have the spike at 220, but we don't have the spike at 440. We just go straight to um, 660. Um, so what's going on there? Well, going back to our visualization, um, if we were to let's see, add in the first harmonic, but then skip the second and add the third, and now skip the fourth, add the fifth, 
skip the sixth, add the seventh, and so on, we start to see something that approaches a square wave. So it turns out that a square wave can be created by this exponential decay of odd harmonics. All right, so what am I getting at with all this talk about signals? Well, I think there are really three key takeaways. The first is the intuitive understanding that we talked about at the very beginning, where we said that when we're looking at a signal in our audio editing program, we can consider its amplitude, its pitch, and its timbre. The second is that for periodic signals, we can use this building block of a sine wave. And rather than looking at the signal in terms of what, um, what it looks like when plotted against time, we can look at it in terms of what frequencies are present in this periodic signal. So with the sine wave as our building block, we said, well, there's one frequency present, and that's the frequency of this sine wave. The last takeaway is that for these more complex signals, we can recreate them using the harmonics of the fundamental frequency. So a sawtooth wave is created by adding together all of the harmonics with this exponential decay. The square wave is created by adding together all of the odd harmonics of the fundamental with an exponential decay. And what's really interesting about this is that we can actually recreate any periodic signal using its harmonics in different sums. And when you're looking at your production or the particular sound that you want to recreate, we can look at it in terms of what's, uh, what's sort of the weighting of these harmonics. And so um, actually for your entire mix, we might be curious as to you know, what frequencies do you want to emphasize and which ones do you want to de-emphasize. So that's signals, and I know it's a really complex topic. Um, there's a lot more depth here than I went into in 10 minutes, but I think this will get us to the starting line. So uh, thanks for checking it out, and hopefully see you soon.